lots of dogs know how to follow commands, although they might be a little bit slow to respond if there's something else going on, maybe something a little bit more compelling than you are. You might even get ignored. Well, that can be frustrating. And in fact, if your dog's reacting to a person or another dog, it can be downright dangerous. In case we haven't met, I'm veterinarian Dr. Jeff Nickel, and this is our family border collie. Her name is Miss America. <laughs> I'm residency trained in veterinary behavior medicine with lots of years of experience in general practice. And so any point along the way, you're welcome to ask me any question about cats or dogs, behavior, anything medical. I'd be happy to entertain questions and try to help. In fact, if you find this information useful, maybe you'd hit the heart button just so that I know I'm being valuable. And if you can hear me loud and clear, hit the wow button. If you have friends who might benefit or their dog might benefit from this information, by all means tag them. So let me know, if you ever had this problem? Have you? I bet a lot of people have. In fact, maybe you wouldn't even be watching this if it hadn't happened. It's happened to me in Miss America because you're out enjoying the great outdoors and uh, and enjoying the walk and little exercise with your dog. And sure enough, all of a sudden your dog is lunging and barking and jerking and, you know, we react. We don't want anybody to get hurt. And frankly, it's pretty embarrassing sometimes, isn't it, girlfriend? And so the, uh, you know, you're cussing and yelling and repeating commands and you find, gee, maybe you finally get your dog under control, but then you look back and you realize it's been going on for a long time. This isn't a new problem. And what we need to do is rather than fight and struggle with our dog at the time that these things are happening, is we need to get this dog to respond reliably and fast and focus on her person or his person. Right, girlfriend? So what I'm gonna teach you today is something called clicker training. This is something that goes back to the late 60s. Clickers were used to train dolphins at SeaWorld. In fact, they've been used to train pretty much every species not just dogs and cats and dolphins, uh, but horses. I'll give you an example. If you've ever owned a horse who had a hard time getting into a horse trailer because it had a, a frightening experience, and you can very gradually teach that horse to incrementally approach that trailer, and with the immediate reinforcer of a clicker, let me show you what that looks like. This is your typical clicker, in fact. Let me bring it a little closer to the camera so you can see it. That's a simple clicker. You can get these at any pet supply store. A um, couple of bucks, you know? My favorite one, though, is called the Click Stick. We showed this last time. And uh, this has the clicker built right into the handle. I don't know if you can see that pretty well. And by holding the handle of it is designed just so that your thumb is right there and you can hit that clicker button. Well, let me explain why this makes so much sense and why it works. Miss America says, I begin at clicks. Aren't I supposed to be having something I'm supposed to do to earn those clicks? Well, that's exactly right. Here, come on over here so people can see you a little better. A little better over here, honey. That's a big girl. So why is this thing such a valuable problem? Problem. Why is it so valuable in solving problems? Here's the, the essence of it, that we have known from behavioral research since probably the 60s, that when you get an immediate reinforcer into a dog or any other creature, they learn four times as fast as if you got the reinforcer into them at two seconds. And that half second is also, uh, when, you, when you mark the behavior immediately at a half second, you also quadruple the retention of the memory. Well, this is a hugely important tool. Well, nowadays we have modern brain imaging like fMRIs and PET scans that show that every behavior, every emotion, every physical movement is, is a coordination of inputs from multiple different neural centers in the brain. And it turns out that the transit time of these nerve impulses between one and the other is about a half a second. So we know that when we mark the behavior at a half second, that is a physical uh, connection. It's a physical change that occurs in the brain, especially with repetition. So when we give a command and we're going to use the clicker as an immediate reinforcer, our thumb is already on the clicker button before we give the command. And that's essential to the whole thing. If you carry a treat bag, 
which you must, okay? <laughs> Many of them have an extra little pocket here where you can put the clicker. Um, the click stick that I like to use most often, I just keep in my pocket, although it has a little belt clip that you can use. But when you give the command, you are already ready to reinforce. So why in the world would a dog respond to just a sound? Well, if the dog doesn't understand any kind of a connection with it, it's meaningless. Well, it has to have value, right? So how do we do that? Well, we connect it with something that what we call is a uh, primary reinforcer. Now, a perfect example of a primary reinforcer is food because we all work for it. Dogs look to us, their leaders, as controlling all of their resources. We are the benevolent leader and they don't see the world the same as people. You know, I joke about us loving them like little people in furry suits and we certainly do. And in our family, we give them human names. Her real name is Maddie, by the way, but I call her Miss America because she's cute and perky. But I digress. Point is that these guys have got to learn a connection. And you know, you could say, well, why don't I just use food as a reinforcer? You certainly can, and it's an excellent reinforcer. The but is that you can't reinforce the dog with food in just a half a second. There's no way to get it into her mouth that quickly. But if your thumb is already on the clicker button, when you give the command, then as soon as you start to see the dog respond, you immediately click. And you can click again when she's finished. But the dog has got to understand what that clicker means. So we do what's called loading the clicker. So let me show you this. I'm going to stand up here to make it a little bit easier for you to see what we're doing. Let me drop that leash for a second, put this away. So I have the clicker here. And Miss America, like all dogs and all people, by the way, is an operant learner. That means trial and error learning. So your dog doesn't know anything about clicker training. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the dog figure out what might earn a click and a treat. And for most dogs, all you have to do is wait for the dog to do something like look at you. So she looked at me and I click and I treat. Okay. Now let me get ready here by having a few treats in my hand. And I've got the clicker in the other one and she's looking at me again. So she gets another treat. Okay. Now, of course, she's so used to the clicker, she's not doing anything else. So let's teach her something else. All right. Let's how about this? How about I say nothing, but I give her an opportunity here. As soon as her elbows touch the ground, she got the click. Now the treat immediately followed. And when you're teaching a dog clicker training, you want that food into that dog about as soon as you can realistically get it into her after she hears the click. So let's do that once more. Okay. Well, needless to say, Miss America here is very well trained at clickers. But if she weren't, it doesn't take very many repetitions for the dog to learn that, gee, if I do this thing, I'm going to earn a click and then a treat. And it doesn't take very many training sessions, only a couple a day, only three to four minutes long each. They learn much faster that way, by the way. We tend to overdo it, most of us, when we train. Um, the dog learns that, you know what, when I hear the click, that's a reinforcer. Really? I mean, it's just a sound. Well, not anymore. It becomes the primary reinforcer. It becomes the thing that she actually earns. And the beauty of it is that it marks those neural circuits in the brain physically on this neurocellular level. They change. The brain is called a plastic organ because it changes physically with repetition, whether it's a fear stimulus or if it's a reinforcer or if it's something quite pleasurable, the brain actually physically changes. It's about the only body that, uh, organ in the body that can do it that way. So what I want this dog to do is on leash walks, I want her to be checking in with her leader often because there may be an opportunity to earn a reinforcer. And it's always click, treat. Okay. And once she gets really good at this, which this girl is, <laughs> you can have your treats in your treat bag. You don't have to have one in your hand. But if you're going to give a command, f fish that, that clicker out of your pocket, have it ready. Do not give a command 
unless you are ready to give the immediate reinforcer. Okay? Now, leashes are pretty valuable too, by the way. And if you're on a leash walk, then you can at least prevent your dog from getting out of control. So, so let's, let's get to the business of, of uh, clear training this dog because what we want her to do is sharpen up her brain. Instead of, like so many dogs, they hear a command, they've been trained to it, they know what to do, but, oh, gee, there's other things going on. There are butterflies and scents and, and beautiful blossoms in the springtime. Uh, here at the uh, open space in the North Valley of Albuquerque, the Bekeke open space area, by the way. We love it here. Um, and so the, um, uh, this dog doesn't mean she has to be focused on you all the time at all. She can be enjoying the walk and taking in nature and all the scents and all the rest of it with as much enjoyment as you are. But she's a dog and she knows that her job is to check in with her leader now and then for opportunities to earn resources. Now I call these things reinforcers sometimes because we're reinforcing the behavior we want. But from her perspective, yes, she gets reinforced and she gets faster and better at these skills. But the, really the big takeaway for her, and let's remember how they think because we're not going to succeed if we don't get into the dog's brain. They're not little people in reasons. <laughs> they don't have human brains. They don't speak a human language, although they have a lot in common with us. What we want her to do is we want her to know that her leader gets it, okay? Now, you know, in the wild, dogs don't live with clickers, but their brain isn't any different in the wild than it is in our house. So you want to start this training at home. Start it without a lot of distractions. Make it easy for the dog. We want to set her up for success. We don't want to just live a life of busting her when she gets it wrong. We want to have her understand how she can earn things at any given time. So we're going to start when it's easy for her, okay? So what I'm going to do with you, Miss America, is let me take you over here, and I'm going to put you on a... I'm going to be this way, honey. Oh, that's very nice. Can you see us all right there, Carolyn? All right. I, thank you. I didn't tell you to do anything. All right. So what I'm going to do now, of course, obviously she knows how to do this, but what I'm going to demonstrate is when you teach a dog to come, and even if your dog knows how to come, I want you to teach it all over again. This time, the new way, the dog's going to be learning how to do it fast and earn reinforcers quickly, okay? So, we're gonna use this clicker to reinforce this dog every step of the way. We'll just make it simple, we'll break it down into two steps. So when I give her the command, as soon as she starts moving toward me, I'm gonna click because that's an important part of what I want, right? And then when she arrives in front of me, that's the other important part. So I'm gonna click again. So she gets two opportunities to earn something that she knows are, are important, okay? By the way, did you notice when she got up, I did not, did not make a verbal correction? Because if I respond to a dog's behavior that I don't like, she feels validated. They always believe that a response from a leader is a reinforcer, okay? So instead, what I'm gonna do is ignore behaviors I don't want. I can correct it with a leash, all right? But I'm not going to say anything because I would confuse my dog. They think differently, all right? Say hi to Ann and Jan. Oh, Ann and Jan, thank you for coming. Ann's so good, she doesn't even have a dog. But I'll tell you what, Ann, you can use these identical methods to teach a cat to come, which I know Charlotte, your cat, already knows that one. Okay. <laughs> in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these same methods in a few weeks, and we're going to teach it to cats as well. All right? So here's where we're going to start with this thing. She is so, Miss America is so accustomed to coming on call. I've got to be careful. She'll do it automatically. All right? But you, you notice the focus that this dog has? Now, also notice the other thing. The clicker's already in my hand, all right? So I'm going to say the command. As soon as she begins to respond, I'm going to, um, I'm going to click. And then when she does the next part, I know I'm boring you, aren't I? Sit, good girl. So she got a click and a treat for sitting.
Miss America, come. Good girl. Good. So she earned a click when she first started moving toward me, when she first responded. Just as soon as her brain started to kick into motion, bang, I marked it. And when she came and got in front of me, which is of course the completion of the task, she got clicked again. But you notice there was only one treat. You, and, and that's because she's well trained to the clicker. In the early stages, a treat has to follow every single click because you want this dog to connect the two. Click, treat, click, treat. Always the same until the dog really gets the clicker. And then what you can do is make a series of commands. So let me show you this. And I'm going to trade clickers. Miss America, heel, all the way around, thank you very much. Oh, that was very nice. I didn't have my clicker in my hand, did I? All right. <laughs> all right, let me get my target stick, all right? Now, last, last week we showed you the target stick a little bit. Can you see us all right, Carolyn? All right. So if I want this dog to derail her attention from something like another dog, I'm going to bring out the target stick, and my thumb's already on the button, and I'm going to go, target. As soon as she touches her nose, I hit the click, and then I can fish a treat out of my pocket. And after a dog's really good at this, you can take your time with the treat. And then I'm going to move it quickly to my face so that she's focusing on her leader, eyeball to eyeball, move it slowly down to her, and she takes it. And what I'm doing is keeping her occupied throughout this entire exercise because this is what we do when another dog or a person comes by. But the first thing that we do before we do that little exercise is we make it easy for her to succeed, which I don't really set this up this way. I'll do it anyway. So if somebody's coming along and the first thing I do is ignore because she may be starting to get agitated and I'm not going to respond. If I'm ignoring and she's not getting agitated, it's okay. Subordinate dogs in a canine social group get ignored by their leader very often. Just the leader's just not paying attention. Okay, so let's pretend another dog or a, and a dog walker is coming. So we're going to go this direction and we're going to duck behind a visual obstacle. And we hope that it's, whoops, I'm running. Limitations of modern science. And then I'm going to target, good girl. And then she gets a treat. And that's sort of the advanced phase on this thing. Okay, hon, that's a big girl. Um, but you know this business of teaching your dog to focus on her leader or his leader, and I keep using the female pronoun because my dog's a girl. Um, what you really want her to do, come on around this way, honey. That's a big girl, come on around a little better. A little better, nice, good girl. Very good. You want your dog to keep an eye on her leader. And this is very canine specific. It's canine specific because we have studied dogs in free living social groups. And of course in their home situations as well. And we know how they have evolved to survive. And that is that in the wild, they're keeping an eye on their leader pretty darn often. They don't want to miss any opportunities to earn chances to hunt with the other dogs, uh, to just cruise the neutral turf outside their territory, to sniff and investigate and engage in healthy, appropriate canine social behaviors. They don't want to miss any opportunities to uh, breed females. I mean, reproduction and survival are the essence of, of life in the wild. And Never mind that our dogs are domesticated and they live in a human home with wall-to-wall -wall carpeting and a flat screen TV and a microwave. That doesn't change the way they think. They look to us as their leaders and they need us to give them opportunities to earn reinforcers. So one of the very best things you could do for any dog is what we call earned privileges. And that is to regard everything but air to breathe and water to drink as a privilege because that is the way your dog recognizes it. Your dog really doesn't think he has a right to food, affection, play, go in, come out, go for a walk. Your dog doesn't believe he has those rights. And you shouldn't either because if you're going to really do a good job with your dog's behavior, you need to lead your dog like a dog. And that is that if you want this, 
you're welcome to have all the privileges that you want, but think in your own brain, these are privileges and the dog needs to earn it. And if you give that dog that canine specific structure, dogs love predictability. One event predicts another. And especially if your dog has an anxiety disorder, uh, gets freaked out, regardless whether it's storm phobia, whether it is uh, tension in the home, those things happen, don't they? Uh, you're on a leaf walk and here comes somebody else and you want that dog to settle down and you can reprimand, you can correct with a leash, don't do that. And the reason is that the dog's earning a response from its leader. And you don't see it like that. You think, my goodness, if I yell at this dog, the dog doesn't enjoy being yelled at, so it's going to stop this behavior. And think back, it keeps happening, doesn't it? And the reason that it keeps happening is partly because the dog says, well, getting a response from my leader is an earned privilege. There is no way that I would have gotten that had I not done something that my leader wanted. So since it keeps earning a reinforcer, I'm going to keep doing it. So if you want your dog to keep lunging and barking and, and all that nonsense when it sees another dog or a person on a leash walk, then that's what you like and go ahead and continue reprimanding. But on the other hand, if you want that behavior to go away, you must stop reinforcing it, which means you have to ignore it. So you remember what I mentioned when we ducked behind that tree because there was an imaginary person and dog walking past, was we completely ignore as we create distance and duck behind a visual barrier to set the dog up for success. We're not going to try to bust this dog for doing the wrong thing. We're going to make it easy for her to succeed. So we create distance. If you don't have a, a tree or a parked car or a corner of a building, you can stand such that you're body blocking. In other words, if a person or a dog's walking past me here, I'm standing here using my legs as a visual obstruction so that my dog doesn't see these other things. And if my dog is trained to do something else, to earn a reinforcer, and the person's over here, I might take my click stick, this target stick, and bring it over here and go target, and this dog couldn't see the other person and the other dog because they're on the other side of my legs. And if I want to, I can, uh, if they're going real slowly, and I can, I can pivot, and I can go, Miss America, and, and change my visual barrier and go, target, good girl. And now she's got to do something else. And if there are more people and more dogs, then I'll pivot again, and I'll go, target, and immediately I click because my thumb's right on the clicker button. Okay, honey, good job. So, Jan has a question, but I can't read it, so can you tell her you'll answer it? All right, Jan. Sorry about that. We're using an iPhone, which does a pretty good job, but of course I can't see it and Carolyn's helping me here and she knows you have a question, but she can't read it. So it'll be in my Facebook after this event and I'll, I'll type you an answer and send it to you. And if you have another question, we can go back and forth a couple of times if you want to. Okay. So, um, so you know, the clicker is only part of this and I, I sort of put the whole thing together last week with the target and the clicker. Um, and this week I wanted to talk more about exactly why clickers work. And don't confine it to just leash walks when you're trying to get your dog to behave. Um, use it at home. In fact, that's the place to start where it's easy for your dog to succeed. Come on around here, honey. All the way around. Oh, a little better. A little, oh, pfft, around this way. There you go. Good job. I, I love that question because so many people struggle with that. Boy. Yeah. So, okay. So here's the question. Um, Jen was asking, can you use this method if somebody comes to the dog and your dog goes wild? Well, at, at the door. Well, let's think about why it's happening. This is, a, this is a problem and we use the diagnostic method with behavior just as we would with a dog or a cat or a person who's coughing sneezing, vomiting, diarrhea, lame. You don't just treat the symptom, although oftentimes that's important. You've got to figure out the cause if you're really going to make a difference. Okay. So why is your dog doing that? Well, number one, without getting any real details from you, I can tell you that territorial behavior is part of that. And that is normal. You'd be impressed with how easy it is for people to mistakenly 
correct, reprimand, or punish normal behaviors. Well, that's pretty confusing because that's hardwired into the dog's brain. She understands, your dog understands, that um, she's supposed to protect the territory. And when we see how dogs behave in the wild, that territory is mighty important because many times they've drug home a carcass and that, that group of dogs is going to snack off that carcass for several days or longer. Um, another resource that they protect their territory is their breeding females. You think, well, it's not the case at my house. Yeah, but that doesn't change the way your dog thinks. They are programmed to be territorial. So your dog's doing the right thing. So your dog raises a big ruckus when somebody's at your door. Still, I would not reinforce and say, you're being a good dog for that, unless your dog's just barking a little bit and is otherwise well behaved. The real problem, in addition to normal territorial behavior, is that you've got that confounded door on the front of your house, Jan. And doorbell. And doorbell, yeah. Well, the, door, the doorbell is the trigger. The dog got used to that very early in its life. And so that's a predictor. You remember we've talked about dogs are big on predictors. One event predicts another. Dog hears the doorbell, knows what's happening, so it just immediately gets agitated. But the other problem is that darn door. If you took that door off the hinges permanently, I don't think you're going to do that, but if you did, then when your dog knew that somebody was outside, he'd run out there and check that person out and check their ID and make them state their business, maybe see a passport, make sure they were legit, do a background check, and if everything checked out, your dog might say, okay, you're, you're good, you can pass. So how do you avoid this behavior? So here's how you avoid the behavior. Well, <laughs> now that I've explained why it's happening, you ask me a question, you ask me what time it is, I build you a watch. Okay, so. Um, what my best advice to do, number one, is set your dog up for success. In other words, you know somebody's out there, immediately put your dog in another room, okay? And if you have a leash that your dog drags around the house, we call it a drag line because the dog's dragging it around the house, you can pick that up and lead the drag line to the other room, believing to every little neuron in your brain that there is not anybody on the other end of that leash because, remember, if you reprimand your dog or look at your dog while you're pulling that leash to the other room, your dog just earned a reinforcer from its leader and is certain that you want more of that behavior. So if you see any behavior you don't want, you always, step one, ignore completely. So you hear somebody at the door and you have already have a leash, you can grab that leash, completely ignoring the non-existent creature on the other end, march to another room and close the door and then you can let the person in. Now you've set your dog up for success because when the person entered his or her territory and really got your dog agitated, well, the dog can't see them. And with the door closed, the sound is somewhat muffled. And so if it's somebody who's a guest and is gonna stay with you for a little while, then let that person come in and sit down, pour them a glass of tea or whatever, and have them remain sitting, and then go get your dog out of the other room and come out holding the leash, and your dog is likely to be less agitated because your visitor is smaller. By sitting, if your dog's, part of your dog's reactions is a perceived threat, and it is in many cases, that threat just got diminished because the person appears smaller. And if the person is a really good ignorer and pays only attention to you and not your dog, um, then your dog can actually learn that having guests isn't that bad. And if your dog is clicker trained and target trained, and next week I want to talk more about target training in particular, and then we'll combine them. But if your dog is target and clicker trained and doing pretty well sitting next to you while you're having tea with your friend, and your dog just starts to get a little nervous looking, then you can go, target. Your dog has touched her nose to the target stick, okay? There's a little bit to training that, not very hard. And then of course, you follow with a treat. Yeah, it's, right, right, and that and that drag line, that leash. It's, you know, this is a six foot training leash. Anything six foot or longer that is attached to your dog's collar or harness serves as a drag line because when you're not using it, the dog's dragging it around the house. So, point is that when you've taken your dog out of the bedroom and uh, your your guest is sitting, and you're going to sit down and and enjoy your friend's company, you're still holding the leash. And if your dog starts to get agitated and too agitated to target and click or follow any other command, and any command is better than none, and your dog's too agitated, your dog's too close to that scary monster. 
needs more distance, and maybe you should stay in the other room for the duration of the visit. But to your question, dogs who bark when somebody comes to the door should never be reprimanded, not only because the dog sees it as a reinforcer, because it wouldn't earn a response from its leader if the leader didn't want more of it, it's canine thinking, okay? Um, but also, uh, when we reprimand, you know, we don't go, now Miss America, I would appreciate it if you didn't make all that ruckus when people come. Well, we don't do it like that, do we? We go, stop that, I'll kill you, <laughs> right? And so because our dogs are our subordinates, they follow our emotional lead. People often say, well, my dog senses my emotions. Not really. Your dog is reading your body signaling and is reading really the tone of voice, the whole thing, and follows. So if you get agitated when your dog does something you don't want, then going forward, the dog says, number one, I always earn my leader's response when I do this, and it's a lot of intense emotion, so not only am I gonna keep doing it, but I'm gonna become even more intensely agitated when these things occur because that's what my leader does. Well, gee, let's not do that. So when somebody comes to your door, and if you have a leash on your dog, and I, I would just do it every day, all day. Just ignore, pick up the leash, go to the other room, close the door. You have set your dog up for success by having more distance, and the dog cannot see the visitor, and then let them in. And then if you feel like it later, have the person sit, and then bring the dog out on a leash. And then you can practice some of these other skills, and your dog can say, you know, I, I like it when visitors come because I get to earn these good things from my leader. I hope that wasn't too much information for you, but that's the essence of that. And like I said, it's extremely common. There's a wonderful book, by the way, and I'm going to put this in the, uh, in the Facebook, on my Facebook page uh, after we get home from the park here. Um, uh, and, and you can read this book. You can pick it up. It's, it's cheap. It's a short book, very well written, and it is called Click to Calm. And it's a wonderful step-by-step uh, -step of how to teach a dog uh, to work for the click. And what you end up with, and the essence of this whole thing is, that your dog's checking in with you fairly often, wanting to earn reinforcers. Boy, that's being a real dog. And that way, when something happens in, on a leash walk or any other place, then you can implement these methods and the dog says, oh, well, I could pay attention to that other dog or that person, but I've learned from lots of experience that I look to my leader, I'll learn good things because my leader understands canine leadership. Is there anything else from anybody? Because I'll sit here all day. I love this place. Right. So Jan's <laughs> just giving some additional information that you can respond to when, you, uh, when you're done. Okay. All right. And anybody else watching this, uh, by all means, read Jan's questions and my, uh, my answers. Because, you know, the reason that I picked this subject for this Facebook Live is because these kinds of reactive behaviors in dogs are such a common problem. Whether it's a leash walk, people coming in at home, uh, sometimes commotion in the home. Um, start this training, start this clicker training in your living room at a quiet time and when your dog is really sharp and, and is just really, really reliable, then take it outside to your yard. There's a little bit more going on and a little bit more challenge, but only a little, and walk around your yard and have your dog do commands and reinforce with a click and a treat. You have to have a treat bag on and you have to have a clicker already in your hand. Where's my... Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a wonderful story, Carolyn. It's, um, <laughs> this doesn't have anything to do with, um, with clickers and targeting, but it's all about reinforcers and the dog working for them. This dog here, we've had her since she was a baby. She's 12 years old. And she hates the UPS man, who, by the way, is a very nice fellow. Um, but, you know, and he ignores her, which is good. You know, there are some people who come by your house and the dog barks like a fiend on the other side of the fence and, you know, they yell at the dog or something and, of course, the dog follows that emotional lead and gets worse. He ignores her, which is the right thing, but that's about it. And, you know, she's territorial and there's that confounded fence there and if we really did the right thing for Miss America behaviorally, we'd take the fence down, wouldn't we? Because then she wouldn't have that artificial barrier that she can't get past and do her job but we're not gonna take the fence down. So she raises a ruckus when James comes and that's just part of the deal. He's the UPS man. 
On the other hand, we have this lady who drives the U.S. mail truck. Her name is Floor. And uh, Floor's a delightful woman as well. We like her a great deal too. But what Floor does is she carries some dog biscuits in her mail truck. So she comes up to the mailbox and the fence is right there. And she just started by tossing treats over the fence. And it was no time at all before this dog saw the mail truck. It looks different than the UPS truck. Sounds different. And she just runs up there and is silent and with great enthusiasm and is ready for that treat, which is reliable. Dogs love a predictor and a reliable result. Boom, boom, boom. We can't sleep we, we, bad. She barked as ferociously. Well, that's right. But the person we had before, Flora, didn't do that. And she was just as bad with that mail delivery person as she has been with the UPS delivery man. Well, what's really funny about Miss America is that we walk down the street on a leash walk and she sees Flora's truck somewhere in the distance. Oh, she's ready. She's got an entirely different mindset than if she sees the UPS truck at a distance, someplace away from home. And recently it was Floor's day off and some other person was driving the mail truck. He was just as excited to see him because they associate these things. And so your dog, a Jan's dog with visitors, here's that doorbell, that's an association. We don't like that one necessarily. Um, we don't like the association she has with seeing a UPS truck, but we certainly do like the association when she sees a U.S. mail truck, thanks to Floor. And so what you want your dog to do is associate that click, which is that immediate marker, because your thumb's already on the button when you give the command. You can give the click when your dog begins to obey. Click again when she finishes obeying, and then fish a treat out of your pocket, and that dog learns that I love the click because I know I did the job, I got it immediately when I got that job done, and I get food. And so it doesn't get much better than that. And then the target is a different skill for a somewhat different purpose, but we combine them and they work very nicely. So thank you for tuning in. I've enjoyed doing it and I've enjoyed you joining me for this thing. Um, and any questions, you're welcome to, uh, to send them to me on Facebook. And by the way, you can go to my website, which is drjeffnichol.com, D-R-J-E-F-N-I-C-H-O-L.com. And when you do, you'll be given the opportunity at the bottom of the homepage to subscribe. And all you have to do is put your email address in. And for no charge, you will get every Tuesday morning in your email box uh, the Facebook Live from the previous week, in case you didn't get a chance to tune in. And you'll get my weekly media blog, which is really my newspaper column from the Albuquerque Journal. It's usually question and answer, although occasionally I do something where I didn't get a question because it's so important. Last week I did one on coronavirus and uh, dogs and cats, which if you're watching the news, there's some possibility, but so far no pet has given it to a person except ferrets, and they can get just as sick as people and transmit it to people. Anyway, um, if you go to my uh, website, and you subscribe, you'll be able to go back and read previous week's columns and see previous uh, Facebook Live events. So I'm, I'm happy to answer the questions and, and have you as a subscriber. Um, so thank you again for tuning in. And uh, Miss America says goodbye. And uh, do you want to do any, anything more to, to earn anything from our friends? Oh, look at you. Here, let's see what else we can do. Are you ready? Miss America down. Good girl. She got the click just as soon as her elbows touched the floor. Good. Now I didn't click and reinforce that time because she made a mistake. But I'll give her another command that she can use to earn it. Maddie, sit. Good. Oh. That's a big girl. A little confusion there. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Thank you again, and have a safe week. Social distancing. <laughs> Wear a mask when you're with people. Stay home and uh, be healthy. I'll see you next week.